about 19 years ago and I was a chaplain with the Marine Corps in Iraq during the uh, Iraq war, I was sent to a camp and uh, I didn't have any supplies or anything to set up for mass. And there were about 3,000 Marines at this forward camp, all in tents and everything. And so the Catholics showed up to help me with mass on the first day. And they said, what do you need, Father? And I said, well, it'd be nice if we had a tent to shelter, you know, the sacrifice of the mass. It'd be nice if we had a table to serve as an altar. It would be nice if we could find some plastic chairs like the officers have over there. And even, even if we could find a nice fan with an extension cord and a generator to do it, it'll keep the Marines cool during mass and we'll get a bigger turnout. 24 hours later, I showed up at the spot. I had a tent. I had a table with altar cloths on it. I had these beautiful plastic chairs like you get at Costco all lined up there. And I had a fan that was going to keep everybody cool. He said, and, and the Protestant chaplain had none of this. <laughs> sorry. And I said, I'm sorry. And I said, uh, these two corporals, these two Marines that set up all this, I said, uh, where'd you get all this? And they go, well, the, the tent came from the general's department and the altar came from the colonels. And then the chairs came from the sergeant's major and all that. And I said, what gave you the courage to requisition all of these things for our mass? And they said, it's easy, Father. We're Knights of Columbus. And then they said what every Knight of Columbus I've ever met has said to me. Father, whatever you need, we'll get it for you. And we'll do it for you. That is the situation. Well, what do we need today? What does the church need from you? What do the bishops need? What does the Pope need from, from you, especially in the United States of America? I'll just say it. We need you to help us defend life. I think right now at this point in our nation's history, that is the most critical issue, to defend innocent human life in the mother's womb. In the 19th century, in the 1800s, the thing we needed most in the United States was freedom for black slaves and full equality for black people once they were freed. In Europe, in the, ninth, in the 20th century, they needed protection for Jews and Catholics stepped forward to help Jews escape and hid them in their houses. But here in the 21st century, especially in our country, we need defense of human life. It is the thing most under attack. You say, well, how can we best do that? Now, I saw your table there and the programs that you have, and it's all fantastic. We have 26 bills pending in Sacramento that will pay and help a woman get an abortion. Where's one bill to help a single mom have her baby and take care of it? I saw you have a lot of things where we're, you know, advocating for uh, crisis pregnancy centers where women can come and get counseling. In my diocese, we have a free medical clinic located right at our cathedral that's sponsored by the Catholic Church, where anyone can come who doesn't have insurance and get free medical clinic, free medical care, no questions asked. There are a lot of things that we Catholics are doing practically to help women in need. But there is one thing overall that I think is the most important, and it's this. In the 19th century, when blacks didn't have the right to go to school in the South, Mother Catherine Drexel, a woman who inherited a fortune from her family, she was the equivalent in wealth to what like Bill Gates would be today. Her father left her a small fortune as a young woman. And she, you know, her heart was moved at the condition of black people and Indians. And so she went to see Pope Leo XIII and she said, Holy Father, you should start a religious order to help the children from black and Indian families. And he looked at her and said, my daughter, why don't you do it? And she did. She took her fortune and she founded the Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament. 
and used all her money to build schools for black and Indian children and found the first university for African Americans in the South, the Xavier University in New Orleans, which is still going strong. But here's the thing, her secret was not the money. She built a new school for black children in Texas, and she and her nuns went there to get it ready and to get it open. The school was on the ground floor, the nuns lived on a convent on the top. Well, the Ku Klux Klan was active in that town, and they didn't think there should be a school for black children there. So the Klan sent word to Mother Drexel and to her nuns, unless you get out by Saturday night, we will burn the whole school and the convent down. And she said, we are not leaving. And that night, she and her nuns went into their convent chapel. They exposed Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament on the altar. They spent the evening in prayer and adoration, begging Jesus to protect them and help them. And what happened? That night, there was a thunder and lightning storm and lightning struck the headquarters of the Ku Klux Klan and burned it down. My friends, St. Paul reminds us, our struggle is not with flesh and blood, but with the principalities, with the powers, with the world rulers of this present darkness, with the evil spirits in the heavens. When there's a spiritual battle going on, we need to participate in spiritual warfare. And that means prayer, rosary, adoration of the Blessed Sacrament, regular attendance at Mass, reception of Holy Communion, engaging in all these kinds of devotions to ask God to help change the hearts of people in our country, that they will have respect for innocent life in the wombs of their mothers. I, I think it's the best thing we can do for it. Uh, in addition to all the other good things that you were doing. In the 19th century, we had Mother Drexels. In Germany, when Jews were being rounded up and put into camps, we had Catholics who would rescue them and hide them in their homes and help them escape. Mother Drexel and her nuns were victorious through prayer and through adoration. And so will we. We in the Catholic Church, we love the innocent children. We also love their mothers. Any woman in need who goes to a Catholic church, who goes to a Catholic hospital, goes to a Catholic convent, will find help and support. When I was in seminary under the Jesuit novitiate in the 1970s, one of my classmates he said, Mike, I need to confide in you something. My sister's a senior in high school and uh, he found out she's pregnant. I said, what's she gonna do? And he said, she's gonna go to a home for unwed mothers in Hawaii, all expenses paid, have her baby, give the baby for adoption and then come back. And he said, and it's all paid for by the Knights of Columbus. And I said, that's fantastic. We love the children in the womb. We love their mothers. I need you, Knights. We, as a Catholic Church, we need you to pray and to tell the truth and then to act. I confirmed 100 kids this morning in Concord. I don't know how many will be coming back and practicing their faith. When I got confirmed, they gave us a definition for what confirmation is. And I was confirmed here in this diocese, St. John Vianney Church, Rancho Cordova. Bishop Bell and the nuns taught us a confirmation is the sacrament that makes us strong and perfect Christians and soldiers of Jesus Christ. That is who you are as Knights of Columbus, as Columbians. Exercise that grace that you got and please help us defend innocent life at this time in our country. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you.